Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Selling Greenville, your favorite real estate podcast here in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm your host, as always, Stan McCune, realtor right here in the Greenville area, and you can find all of my contact information in the show notes. If you need to reach out to me for any of your real estate needs, please go ahead and go to those show notes and look up my contact information. You can text me, you can call me, you can email me. I have people send me DMs. I have people Skype me. Now, I don't have all of that stuff in there, uh, but you can find me through the show notes or just by by Googling my name, quite frankly. Um, and please, as always, if you like this show, please subscribe to it. Please leave a rating. Please leave a review, uh, particularly if you're using Spotify or the uh, Apple uh, podcast app. Those are the primary ones that people are listening on. Uh, so leave a rating and a review, and I would greatly appreciate that. By the way, uh, last week, we did go ahead and debut the first ever video for this show, and I put that on YouTube, and I had a, a good response to it. Now, um, it is, and, and we had a good response, obviously, to Derek. He was great. Um, it, I, I felt like the interview went uh, went quite well, given that I had never done a uh, basically a live interview like that and uh, never had a guest on the show. And uh, Derek was fantastic. But uh, with all of that, uh, we're going to keep having guests on the show. Probably I'm, I'm probably hoping to do like once a month, something like that, uh, maybe once every couple of months, just kind of depending. Um, but I am hoping to do this video as well now. Just a warning, uh, the video is going to be kind of prehistoric to start, and I will continue to invest in it and will improve the video as we go along. But right now, this is very basic. You see a window behind me if you're watching the video. Um, there's nothing fancy. Um, and uh, over time, we're going to improve it and make it more interesting. Uh, but for those of you that are listening audio only, I am going to be screen sharing for this episode. And so there will actually be some good reason to, to look at the video if you'd like to. Um, if you wanna find it, uh, find Stan McCune on YouTube. You actually don't search Selling Greenville. If you search Selling Greenville on YouTube, interestingly, a um, a realtor from like, uh, I don't know if she's still active or not, but has videos from like 2014 called Selling Greenville. I didn't even know. I never knew that that existed. Um, so. Anyway, there are some videos from a station called uh, Selling Greenville on YouTube. That is not mine. Um, you need to actually just look for my personal YouTube, which is uh, which is just, you can look up Stan McCune. I believe, let me look this up real quick. Um, my username on YouTube is at Stan McCune 7303. I don't think I created that. I think Google created that for me. Um, but if you want to find these episodes, look up my personal YouTube and you can watch them that way. Um, I'm also putting these on Facebook as well for all of my people connected with me on Facebook, which by the way, if you want to friend me on Facebook, go ahead. Um, I uh, do that for, with a lot of my clients. I'm connected with a lot of my clients on Facebook. So I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Uh, just make sure you let me know in advance uh, who you are so that I know to accept the friend request. Uh, you can send me a DM or something of that nature, or use the contact information in the show notes. All right, enough of that. We're going to jump right in to the GGAR market stats, uh, which just came out uh, for the month. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, as you can see, there's going, for those of you watching on video, there's going to be some, uh, some quirky things that happen for sure. So just bear with me. Uh, but we have the GGAR market stats for the month of February, and there is a lot of juicy information here that I'm excited to get uh, in, to get in front of you guys. So we're just going to jump right in and start with what is going on with the market, specifically with new listings. Um, new listings, and and I'm I'm going to help you guys uh, again. I'm I'm. I want this to always remain audio friendly, but I am going to have to make a few adaptations for those that are that are watching this on video. If my adaptations go too far and make it difficult to understand on audio, please uh, please share that feedback with me. Um, but new listings we had for the month of February 2023, we had 1,456 new listings. That was almost unchanged from 2022 
which was 1,468 new listings, a slight decrease year on year, but but basically the same, right? Um, and, and these numbers tend to get tweaked over time um, as more data comes in, GGAR, uh, the Greater Greenville Association of Realtors tends to uh, update these numbers in in future months, um, so it's it's very possible that that these numbers end up being basically exactly the same. But they're close enough as it is. So we had had a trend from October through December of uh, of 2022, where we had had year on year decreases in new listings after. Um, a, a long while where we had increases. Um, January reversed the trend where we had a 7.9% increase year on year of uh, of new listings. So that was interesting, but then we dropped back down in February. I think that this has ramifications in a lot of different ways. Um, and, and we're going to see that as we go along. But needless to say, we need these new listings numbers to go way, way up for us to see major changes in the inventory. These are still, it, it needs to be higher than what it was last year. And so far, we've only had uh, one month out of the past uh, four that has seen an increase year on year. Um, so that from, from the standpoint, if you're a buyer in this market, that's not a positive. If you're a seller, you're probably a, a little bit happy that inventory stayed flat for the month of February year on year. Um, pending sales. All right. This is the warning that I give every single time we go through these stats. This is never right for the most recent month. So we're looking at February, which is the most recent month that we have data for. This number that's going to be in here, which is 784 pending sales for the month of February. That is absolutely wrong. There is... It is not going to be at 784. It's going to be much higher than that. Next month, we'll see how much higher it is. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go back two months to the month of January 2023. What was that number? And this is very interesting. So the pending sales for January 2023 was 1,121, which is a 12.6% decrease year on year from January 2022. Um, now, if that sounds really bad, that's actually um, from a pending sales standpoint, from from the standpoint of of homes going under contract. Um, this is actually a pretty modest number because December was down twenty six point six percent, November twenty eight point seven percent, October twenty five point two percent. You have to go all the way back to July of twenty twenty two to find a month that had a uh, a lower year on year. Uh, uh, or yeah, a lower uh, decrease year on year in pending sales. Um, so what that tells me is we're starting, uh, at least we started to see at the beginning of this year, the market kind of resemble a little bit more of, of what 2022 looked like. At least the start of 2023 resembled in a lot of ways the start of 2022. Now, I don't want to draw any major, major conclusions from that because everything is different versus the start of 2022. But it was interesting that after three uh, straight months of declines in the 25 to 30 percent range year on year, we dropped down in January to only a 12.6 percent decline in pending sales. I've been saying that I... I feel like absent a major recession or a major war or something like that, I think we're going to have uh, a a strong year, particularly a strong uh, a strong spring and summer season here in the Greenville market. And at least based on the pending sales numbers, and and we'll obviously start looking at some other numbers, um, that would uh, start to validate my belief. Um, this February number seven hundred eighty four. That's going to be. Uh, way off. That's simply not going to be accurate. And I'm going to pull something up to and and apologize for my uh, video. Those that looking at this on YouTube. Because again, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm we're figuring this all out together. <laughs> um, so the I, I want to go back to 
February's pending sales. So in February, it said that January's numbers were, were 741. And then that ended up getting revised once they came out with uh, with the numbers for it, this most recent month. They revised January from 741 to 1,121. So that's a massive increase um, where and, and a massive correction on pending sales. So this is what I'm talking about. So this number for February, 784, this is probably going to be corrected to around like 1,200. So we probably had closer to 1,200 pending sales for the, for the month of February, um, which if that's the case, then that's going to be a pretty, a pretty sizable, but probably comparable to January decline because February of 2022 was 1,365 pending sales. So we're probably looking at somewhere in the between 10 to 15% decrease, but we'll have to wait uh, year on year decrease, but we'll have to wait until next month to see uh, exactly how that plays out. So pending sales, it's the count of properties of which offers have been accepted in a given month. Um, we are still at very low numbers overall. Um, but those numbers are not as awful as some of the news headlines might make you think, at least for the Greenville area. Now, pending sales tend to uh, trail closed sales by about a month, right? A month to two months. So if you have a, a really strong pending sales month, then the next one to two months, that will be reflected in the closed sales data. And so... Uh, that's what we saw as well. February 2023 had 1,023 closed sales, which was only a 12% decrease versus February of 2022, which saw 1,162. So that decrease, if we compare that to January, December, and November, and October, that is a much smaller decrease than all of those other four months had. So we're starting to see the market, again, starting to see some stabilization uh, more closed sales happening. Towards the end of the year, people really started to pull back. But it seems like now people are starting to come to grips with the new normal. That is the market that's like, okay, um, these interest rates, these mortgage rates, they're not going down anytime soon. Prices are still going up. Um, what that means is that it. I, I think a lot of buyers are coming to the conclusion of like, okay, I just have to bite the bullet. I just have to go ahead and go under contract and make a purchase because whatever I'm waiting for, whether it's rates to go down or prices to go down, none of that is happening. And so we just need to uh, to go ahead and, and move forward. Now, historically, you can look, uh, if you're on YouTube, you can see uh, the graphic. This closed sales number is still a very, very low number. This is the, the lowest number that we've seen since uh, 2021. So it's still very light from a closed sales standpoint. It's still a difficult time for a lot of realtors right now. There's just not a lot of business happening in comparison to the past few years. Um, but it's not as bad as it could be. If, if we were following the trend of the past several months, it would be really, really bad. I mean, January was down 30.4% year on year in terms of closed sales. Um, and and. We felt that. We all felt that. I told you guys, uh, you know, uh, I think it was back in either late January, or early February, how I went to a conference in Columbia and realtors were saying about how there was just no closings up to that point, basically for the entire year. But then all of a sudden they were staying really busy and they saw all of a sudden a bunch of stuff coming up in their pipeline. That's that's what a lot of us that are that are experienced what we've been seeing. Um, days on market until sale, the average number of days between when a property is listed and when an offer is accepted in a given month, um, that went up a whopping 93.3% year on year. It went from 30 days on market until sale in 2022, February of 2022, to 58 days in February of 2023. And that's a uh, even a big month on month decrease uh, increase from January when it was 49. Now I've been telling you guys, you guys that have been longtime listeners of the show, I've been telling you this days on market till sale until sale number, it has not topped out. We are going to continue to see this skyrocket. And the reason for that is we have so many people, so many sellers in the market that did not account for the market correction. And they were just assuming, you know, 
like in the past for for two two and a half years we had market conditions where you could overprice a home by 10 percent and just wait it out for a few months and someone would buy it but we're in a market right now where if you overprice your home by 10 percent, people aren't even looking at it um if you overprice your home by five percent it's going to linger and languish on the market for a, a long time. If you overprice your home by just a few thousand, it's going to sit on the market for several months. And so what's going to happen is sellers, and we're already seeing this, sellers are going to come to their senses and realize that they need to start dropping prices um, or people are going to come in with lowball offers uh, over, after several months of of something being listed on the market and sellers are going to accept that. that. And what we're going to see is we're going to see that inflate these days on market until sale. All of these sellers that overpriced their homes and so their homes are are just lingering and languishing on the market. Once they go under contract, finally, if they go under contract after they've been on the market for 100, 120 days, um, that is going to cause this number to go up. Now, um, pre-pandemic, this number was, you know, it would sometimes go up above 60. Um, you know, in the uh, in in the months and and years, just kind of following the pandemic, but usually it was in the uh, more in the mid fifties range. So we're already seeing this number surpass th what it was pre pandemic, being at fifty eight, and I think it's going to keep going up. I think we're gonna probably see it go at least into the seventies at some point, but that doesn't mean that you should expect if you list your home for to have to wait for two, two and a half months for it to go under contract. That is only if you do not list your home correctly. Either it's not marketed correctly or it's overpriced. Those are the only reasons why it should. And the, I should hedge one other thing. If you have a home with really unique features, for instance, a very, very, you know, unique two and a half million dollar you know, luxury home, um, obviously those take longer to sell. And that that's just kind of the way it, it always has been. Um, but if you have, you know, a standard $350,000 home, Riverside School District in Greer or Five Forks or whatever, um, it should not be taking more than a, a few weeks at the most to go under contract if it was priced correctly and marketed correctly. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Median sales price. All right, this is the juiciest thing that we have on here. We have our first in a very, very long time, our first year on year decline in the median sales price. Now, for those that are new to listening to this, um, we don't really look at the average sales price very much when we're looking at sales price data because the average is heavily inflated by, by months where luxury homes are sold. If, if In the Greenville market where the average price point is around $300,000, if you have a, a month where a bunch of million plus dollar uh, homes sell, that average price point skyrockets. It goes way up disproportionately just because of a few homes. So we look at the me median, which is the middle number in a sequence of numbers. And that really kind of gives us a better idea of what's happening in the market. Um, and so we had it, it's GGAR shows as a 0% increase or decrease, but in reality, it was a slight decrease. It went from 290,000 in February. Sorry, it was a, a slight um, increase. I, I've, I've been saying decrease. It was a slight increase from 289,900 in February, 2022. It went up only a hundred dollars to 290,000. Now that is a, Juicy stat, right? Because we've been seeing, um, obviously, you know, when the market was crazy, we would see routinely median price, median sales price increases of of twenty percent or more. Um, this year um, and and the past six months, we hadn't seen anything less than two point four percent, which was December of twenty twenty two. Last month, it bounced back up to six point five percent. Uh, year on year increase for January this month, only a hundred dollar increase year on year, which is essentially a zero percent increase year on year. Now, I've been saying this again the entire year so far, we that we've been doing this show that I've been watching this number very closely to see if it goes below 
285,000 because that would tell me if we had a a greater than seasonal decrease. So normally what happens is we see we see normally every year a peak in the median sales price during the summer and then it comes back down during the fall and winter season and then it it goes back up during the spring and summer season that is the seasonality of the market if you're looking on youtube you can see this happen uh there uh 2021 was an anomaly where it peaked towards the end of the year and and 2020 as well but you look at every other year there is a peak in the summer in the spring or summer and that is the way it always does and then it falls back down and then it comes back up and the, the peak from the successive summer. So what we should see is we, we should see the peak for this summer, for this spring or summer. It should be higher than the peak that we had in 2022 or else we are seeing prices decline. But what I'm looking at in real time is, and what I've been telling you guys is I've been looking for the median sales price. Is it going to go below 285000 That's the number that I have determined from all of the data that I've looked at for the Greenville market, that would mean that we are experiencing a greater than normal, a greater than seasonal decrease in prices. That would that would constitute an actual uh, price prices going down, actually decreasing uh, based on what I think. So we're very close to that, okay? Because uh, this is the lowest number, this two hundred ninety thousand dollar number. This is the lowest number that we've seen in a year. Or, or close to a year. Um, so so we'll have to keep track of that. We'll have to see what happens in uh, in in March. I'm very curious to see. My hunch is that this number is going to come back up in, in the month of March. I don't think we're going to see it go below 290,000 because there's a lot of activity in the pipeline. We've seen uh, those pending sales numbers are stronger than than perhaps many thought they would be. And I think that that's going to continue to bolster prices going up. And inventory is not going up um, to the extent that most thought it would. Now, I've been saying for a long time, I, I think inventory is going to stay fairly low. And that's exactly what we're seeing. So I think all the dynamics, um, we, we, this may very well be the bottom for the year, this 290,000. But if it's not, if it's not the bottom, if we see it go down in March, then that tells you that we're actually seeing a, a bit of a housing recession. That said, I, I I do not personally believe that that's what's gonna happen, but we will uh, we'll certainly keep track of that. Um, the average uh, for February was up 1.3% year on year. Again, we're not gonna talk about that, um, but you can, if you're on YouTube, you can see that chart. Um, the percent of list price received. Uh, this is the percentage found when dividing a property sales price by its most recent list price. So this does not account for price drops. Always keep that in mind. A, a, a listing could have dropped its price and uh, and then gone under contract. This data does not account for that. It takes the most recent list price and then takes the average for all properties sold in a given month not accounting for seller concessions. For instance, when a seller uh, pays for the buyer's closing costs. And so you divide these two numbers and that gives you the percent of lice, uh, the percent of lice, yeah. The percent of list price received. The most recent sales price, uh, the most recent list price divided by uh, the, uh, sorry, dividing a property sales price by its most recent list price, and then taking the average for all properties sold in a given month. All right. So we've kind of seen this level out. And, you know, obviously we had that insane stretch for what felt like forever, where the percent of list price received was over 100%. Not only was it over 100%, not only was on average sellers getting more than what they listed their homes for, they also weren't having to pay for any buyer closing costs. It was insane. Um, in August of last year, we finally saw that number dip below 100%. And that's been steadily declining until December when it reached 97.9%. And then basically we flatlined. January is 97.8%, February 97.8% as well. Those are both 2.3% uh, decreases year on year. Um, so we may have seen 
the the bottom of list price received. And this is, in my opinion, a pretty healthy number, 97.8%. That's a number that is pretty comparable. And if you're looking at the chart, you can see it's pretty comparable to uh, what we saw pre-pandemic. What people were used to for really a long time has been for that number to be around 98 point, uh, around 98%. So when you've got a home listed, you can expect to get roughly 98% of what it's listed for and perhaps to pay for a little bit of buyer closing costs. That is what a seller in the Greenville market should expect right now. So that's something to keep in mind. It appears that the free fall of that number has finally leveled out to what it basically was in 2019. Um, the housing affordability index, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but this is essentially, um, well, I, I'm just going to read it. An index of 120 means the median household income is 120% of what is necessary to qualify for the median priced home under prevailing interest rates. A higher number means greater affordability. So we like to see this number at or above 100 because that means that the median household can afford the median priced home. Um, it's been below that number. Uh, basically since uh, since 2021, essentially. Now, this is a positive though. We finally, it, it finally popped back up a little bit month on month. January was at 79, January of this year. And then for February, it popped back up to 82. And that's in spite of the interest rates being as crazy as they are. Um, now, uh, what's, what's funny is um, last week for the interview with Derek, we had interviewed that, as Derek pointed out uh, at the end of the interview on International Women's Day, which was before Silicon Valley Bank uh, and a bunch of other banks failed and ended up having to be basically bailed out. Well, that has had, and, and by the way, that was very frustrating for me that it was like, oh, I feel like we need to record this podcast all over again. We didn't. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys were understanding of the fact that uh, that we had no control. We there nobody anticipated that happening. Uh, but nonetheless, um, the uh, the bank's failing has had a really uh, a profound impact on a lot of things. And one of those things is that mortgage rates have come down a little bit since that time. At least that's uh, that's what I have seen uh, on a few different indexes. And so we might actually see this housing affordability index um, actually come up a little bit more for the month of March. The only thing we don't know is, again, how much our price is going to increase. Are we going to see that continue um, or are we going to see prices uh, start to, to fall back down into that non-seasonal range? We'll have to keep uh, we'll have to keep track of that. Inventory of homes for sale. Um, <laughs> this was. Also, a whopping number on here. The inventory was up 144.8% year on year for February. It was at 3,466, um, as opposed to February of 2022 is 1,416. Uh, 3,466, though, that's still below what we normally saw pre pandemic. So that's still a very, very low number. And when you factor in that demand, even though demand is is way down versus what it had been before the Fed started raising rates, demand is still stronger than it was pre-pandemic. We still have way more buyers due to millennials being of age, due to uh, baby boomers having so much money, so much cash, you know, buying retirement homes, all of that. Um, and so there's still way more demand. Of course, Greenville has the steady flow of people moving here, 20 people per day, uh, moving into the Greenville area. And so we have a, a steady flow of uh, just of, of demand, just constant demand. And so this inventory, it needs to be higher for us to see, uh, you know, prices to go down in any meaningful way or for the market to ease up beyond what it already is at. Now, the month supply of inventory this is um, when we take the inventory of homes for sale at a given at the end of a given month divided by the average monthly pending sales from the last 12 months. Now this, because pending sales is not uh, an accurate number, particularly accurate um, for the month of February, as I've already expressed, this number is not going to be especially accurate. So, um, so we'll look back at January 
And I'm pretty sure I said this when I went through these numbers on my last podcast for the for the month of when they came out in, in February for the month of January. I think I said that I expected it to remain in the two and a half month range. And that's exactly what it did. Um, February, again, this is inaccurate. It says 2.8 months of inventory. I expect that to be closer to 2.5 when they revise this next month. Uh, still, that's a massive increase from the one month of inventory that we had in February of 2022. And thank goodness, one month of inventory, nobody nobody likes that. That's stressful for everyone. I guess there are some sellers that you know are, are excited when their home is the only home on the market. Um, but then you have so many showings, so much activity, and it's, it's exhausting. Um, two and a half months of inventory is still very, very low. Uh, until we see inventory get up, t- t- typically, until we see inventory get up more into the six-month range, uh, we don't typically consider it to be an even market. Below six months, it is a seller's market. Above six months, it's a buyer's market. Now, I've made the argument in other episodes that perhaps we're in a new normal where a buyer's market is more like four to five months of inventory. Very possible. The market is forever changed after the pandemic. Um, And uh, I'm not going to get into all the details right now on why I think that might be the case, why why the new normal might be that a uh, buyer's market is something more like four and a half or five months of inventory. But um, for now, we are still very much, regardless, in a seller's market with only roughly two and a half months of inventory. Um, I'm not going to get into a whole lot more of the weeds here. Um, we're still seeing strong closed sales in the 500,000 to 750,000 range. That ended up being up 31.3% year on year. The million and above range was up 19.5% year on year. And the 350 to 500,000 range was up 19.2% year on year. So we're seeing uh, a, a lot more closings in the between 350,000 and a million and above, with the only exception being 750 to a million uh, homes in, the, in that price range that they had 5.5% fewer closings year on year. Um, I think that that's just because there's not a lot of homes in that uh, in that price range that are going for sale. Um, we saw a, a 4.9% increase in closed sales between the 250 and $350,000 price point. That's really, really good. Um, because that means that there's enough homes for sale in that price point that people can buy them. That's been a difficult price point for for people uh, recently for for buyers. And so uh, I'm very happy to see that that is increasing. Um, And again, I'm not going to I'm not going to get into uh, really anything else there. I think that that uh, is enough for you guys for now when it comes to uh, the market stats. So I think in the end here, I think we are going to continue to see a uh, a strong spring season. I think we're going to, uh, all the indicators to me are that um, it's going to be very busy and that it's going to remain a seller's market. We're going to continue to see probably low inventory. I think we're going to see uh, prices kind of reverse that trend where they've kind of, kind of flatlined. I think we're going to see uh, meeting price points start to uh, start to go back up. We'll see if they go back up. If you know, like I said, if the peak of this year surpasses the peak of last year, uh, my hunch is that it probably will. But I think I, there is a good chance that it doesn't. I mean, I would say there's probably a thirty to forty percent chance that it doesn't. And if it doesn't, then uh, then we'll know that that the market kind of recessed a little bit. Uh, you know, largely due to just the the uh, the mortgage rates and and all that happened with that. Um, but everything to me, I guess the positives from what I've seen um, is that things are are kind of stabilizing. We're starting to get a sense of okay, here is where the market is. I think that sellers are starting to get more comfortable. I think buyers are starting to get more comfortable. People are starting to learn what this new dance looks like. Uh, and that's helpful in a variety of ways for, for everyone. But it makes it easier for me. We're, we're starting to have real estate norms again, 
where, you know, sellers are finally starting to understand, okay, I can't just price this fixer upper home for top of the market. We're starting to see fixer uppers come in, you know, for $80,000, $90,000. We haven't seen that in a long time. People were listing fixer uppers for $120,000, $130,000. And in some instances, they were getting that. So that market has been really hit, hit hard. And that market in particular has, you know, if anything, has caused that median price point to start to drop. It's that people are no longer willing to take big risks on fixer upper homes. They're, they're wanting to see a big discount if a home is a fixer upper. And that's good. That is healthy. That's what we want to see in the market. Um, and so this is something that we'll, we'll obviously continue to track. It'll be another month before we see uh, the numbers for, for March. Um, but the numbers for February had a lot of interesting tidbits for us. Um, and I hope that you found that interesting. I appreciate you guys listening. As always, my contact information is in the show notes. You can listen to this on uh, whatever podcast app you want, or you can watch it on YouTube for now. Um, the video quality will be improving in the future. Uh, but for now, you have to to live with what I have uh, because I don't have time to to buy a bunch of equipment and to figure out all of that at the moment. But I appreciate if you guys could subscribe to the show, if you could leave a rating, if you could leave a review, um, please uh, do all of those things. I'd appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys listening. We will talk again next time.